Left those bees by the harbor side And I took my chances on a highway ride Back to Baltimore Baltimore, I'm putting on a chase in Baltimore, yeah Who's missionaries to put unwanted books into the hands of those who want them? The book thing officially became a, an entity uh, 9999, which is about 15 years ago. Um, I bought this building April 1st, 2005. I started the book thing, it was out of the bar, it was out of my van, it was out of my apartment. Um, eventually I rented a, the basement of a row house. was there for about five, six, about five years. Um, and then the rent got too high, mm -hmm. so we looked at buying a building and we bought this one. If I ever consciously thought about starting it, I never would have. It just kind of happened. It's one of those things that you just, you do, and after a while, then you realize what you've done. Mm -hmm. But you don't set out to, to do something. Um, it's like the analogy I use is if you're walking out of a store, and somebody's walking towards the door on crutches, do you hold the door open for them? You do it, I mean, but when did you get the idea to start doing that? Mm -hmm. You kind of never did, it just kind of happens. The majority of everybody is a volunteer. Um, I do have some independent contractors who do some work, um, but for the most part everybody's just a volunteer. Retired folks, um, People who love books, people who have nothing else to do, um, people who are uh, gotten into trouble and have to do court order community service, uh, high school kids. I go through every book that comes in. We do. A, I do a quick overall sort, um, pulling out moldy books, um, pulling out books missing pages. Um, trying to put sets of books where somebody may drop off a 10 volume set in six different boxes. <laughs> Doing that kind of thing. I pull out the fast moving categories, kids books, classics, so those can go straight to the shelves. It's, as far as I know, I'm the only one who takes any kind of book mm -hmm. from anybody and gives it to anybody. A lot of them will go in huge groups where I'll have a person come in and take a few thousand paperbacks. Mm -hmm. um, I'll have a school come in and take 600 kids books. Um, my record keeping is incredibly bad so that no one can come to me and say, can you give me a list of people who got medical books on how to perform abortions? Or uh, who's gotten Korans? Or, or whatever. So that's why the only thing that people do is sign a name. I don't care whose name it is, just sign a name and say how many books they got. It's my full-time job. I mean, it was since 99. Um, and like any job, there are parts that I still really like, and there are parts that I just can't stand. Mm -hmm. But every once in a while, I stick my head out in the public areas when we're open and just listen and it's and that's what keeps me going it's not the the fact that I'm standing in an unheated warehouse for 14 hours a day in concrete sorting through books it's the that is fun but it's it's the the people who call me up and are so grateful that we exist because they're aunt died, their grandmother died, and they don't want to just throw away the, that person's books. They want them to give them to somewhere. Um, so it's, I almost provide a service for both ends of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's not unusual to see somebody who I know is a head of corporation or executive director of a couple of the larger foundations in town, coming in, dropping off books and wandering around looking at Tom Clancy's standing next to 
a guy who's here killing time before the homeless shelter opens, mm -hmm. doing the exact same thing. Um, and anybody who's been here once dresses down the next time they come. It, so it's you, you can't tell who's who. The, the only identity that people have here is what kind of books they like. Down to Baltimore. Baltimore, I want to take a ride down Baltimore.